Hi, this is a short video on getting the Google Coral uh, to work with the Raspberry Pi 4. Um, so if you go and get Google Coral and go and download the software from uh, Google's website and try and run the installation script uh, on the Raspberry Pi 4, uh, the script bombs out. Um, it does it for a couple of reasons. There's a couple of bits and pieces uh, within the script that cause it to fail. I mean, the Raspberry Pi 4 is brand new. Um, it was only out last week, so you can't really expect Google uh, to catch up that fast. Um, you, you know, I mean, the, the, the script expects Python 3.5 as well, and uh, Raspbian Buster uses Python 3.7, and there's all sorts of little bits and pieces in there that cause it not to work correctly. So I re-rolled um, the script that Google provides um, to get it to work with the Raspberry Pi 4, and it does, and it works very, very well. I've detailed um, all of the changes on my GitHub here, um, and the script itself is available in source. Um, there's not actually that many changes um, to get it to work correctly. Um, but you know, works for me, so we're all good. It's, it's basically we're adding in this section here that says, um, well, it's a, it's a Raspberry Pi four. Um, there was a section further on that caused it to uh, bomb out because there was no. Um, it was trying to run a command that wasn't as root, so there it is. And then right at the end, we do a little bit of library foo. If I scroll right to the end of the script, there it is. Uh, we basically copied this library, um, which is C Python thirty five dash arm, uh, we copy it to cpython37 dash arm. Um, obviously this thing was compiled um, for Python 3.5 and wasn't compiled for 3.7. does work on 3.7, um, but there might be things, you know, insidious things, that, you know, memory leaks or whatever, who, who knows. Um, but it works for me. Um, so that's all I can really say on that. And I, I hope it works for uh, the rest of you as well. So, um, last night I've written a couple of uh, scripts uh, that do some live object detection uh, that you might be interested in. I've got one called pycamtpu.py, um, which just uses the Raspberry Pi's camera to do some live object detection. We'll take a look at that in a minute. Um, impressively, I was getting 36 frames per second video with the script and 36 frames per second inferencing, uh, you know, almost as good. Um, this is far, far better than what I was getting on the Intel NCS2. Um, so I think I'm going to be using this in my projects. Um, I've also written another script today uh, that does the same thing for video files. Uh, so we can load in an MP4 uh, and do some inferencing on that as well. Uh, interestingly, since we can push video through our script as fast as we like, um, we can do some really, really high speed inferencing as well. Uh, like I say, it blows the NCS2 out of the water uh, in terms of performance. Um, the other very, very good thing about Google's code um, is they've plenty of documentation, like loads of documentation on how to how to do some object detection or, or um, and, and whatnot. Um, yeah, so the doc documentation is really impressive. One of the interesting things that I came across the other night was you can get an existing model um, and retrain it very very quickly um, on the TPU as well. Um, so I'm looking forward to giving that a try. So let's take a look at the actual uh, scripts I've written. Here's the PyCam script. Uh, let's run it and take a look at it. So here's our OpenCV output window, and we can see, you know, we're getting 34, 35 frames per second um, video and about 35 frames per second, you know, 35, 36 frames per second inferencing, which is really, really, really impressive. If you followed my um, other videos, um, for example, the beer bottle following robot. I mean, you know, following beer bottles around is, is one thing, but it was very, very slow. I mean, if, if you move the beer bottle too fast, it would miss it. Um, I'm hopeful that this is going to be able to be quick enough to do things like chase the dog around the living room, um, which should make life really, really interesting in here. Um, so that's that script. I mean, you know, do with it as you will. Uh, we'll take a look at the other script, which is very interesting. This is the, the video script. Uh, this is a, a small video I took downtown today uh, of traffic. Uh, and we can see it detecting people and cars and the, a bus will come past in a minute or two. Um, but again, 34 frames per second uh, video and 34 frames per second inferencing, uh, which is, you know, really, really good. The interesting thing about video is, like I said before, we can push uh, video frames through our script as fast as we want. So let's quit out of this and do exactly that. And if we take a look at our video script, um, with a cv 2wait key down here, which is currently set to uh, 20 milliseconds. Um, if we make it more like 5 milliseconds, um, our script should probably run frames upwards of 70-odd frames a second. 
so here we are at oh, 80 odd frames per second and, and around about 68, 70 fr um, frames per second um, inferencing, which is really, really impressive. And the bounding box is, we'll have to run that again. The bounding boxes are doing a really good job of keeping up with uh, the objects moving across the scene um, at, the, at the speed they are as well. Excellent. Um, we'll take a, a look at the code real quick. As I've said, it's up there on GitHub, so have yourselves a read. Um, you know, there's, there's a reasonable amount of comments in here, but it's not crazy. Uh, we've got the usual um, libraries to uh, import at the top. We've got the uh, Google's um, Edge TPU libraries to import. Um, we've got our camera initialization. For the Raspberry Pi, um, for the Pi Cam, it's worth noting that um, I've set the frame width and height to 304 by 304 because the camera will support it. But more importantly, um, the input size on our network down here is meh, ju just shy of 300 by 300 pixels. So it's pointless um, to have, um, you know, like 640 by 480 um, frames being pulled from the camera and then have to downsample them or whatever uh, to get them to fit in our uh, network in any case. So we might as well just start by pulling small frames and have a nice fast script. Um, we've got our section here that reads in the labels file that comes with the models. Um, there's a sort of bit of hackery uh, that goes in here. Um, although the labels are in order in the file, there are sort of label uh, positions missing, if you will. So we skip from uh, like label number 10 to label number 12 and so on, and it, it, it can cause uh, problems. So basically, uh, we're reading the lines of the script, and each line has a identification number and a, and a piece of text to display. Um, so we're just saying in here, um, build an array, which we do up front uh, with a, a lot of placeholders of none in. Um, and then we say stick the items in the array position that's sort of defined in the text file. Um, so that was a little bit interesting. And we've got a function here that handles all our inferencing. Uh, it takes a few arguments. We've got our image coming in. Uh, we've got our input queue and our output queue. Um, in order to get you know decent frame rates out of this, we um, push, we run this function um, in a process all of its own. Um, this section here is, a, is a, a blocking piece of code. So if I try and send an image to it, um, it's gonna take time to send it, and it's gonna take time to get the image back, and we don't want to wait inside of our video loop uh, to do those kind of things. So ultimately, when we've retrieved our image uh, from the camera or the video or whatever, uh, we just push it in a queue, uh, and this thing listens to see if that queue has any data in it, and if it does, it will process it. Uh, so that's that. I mean, the code is really lean and straightforward. Um, again, t totally unlike the the um, NCS um, two for Python. Um, this is very very straightforward. It's very very easy to understand. Um, we set up our queues. As I've said before, we start this thing as a process, um, so it runs on a process all of its own. And then we've got the main loop itself. So it's dead straightforward. As long as we're receiving frames. Um, let's go and grab the frames and display them in OpenCV. Um, let's go and convert our frame into a proper image that um, th that the um, TPU understands. Stick it in the queue. Um, if we happen to have gotten uh, uh, some data back um, in our output queue, we're going to read that stuff out um, and then draw our bounding boxes um, on the screen uh, with this section of code here. Um, the rest of the stuff down at the bottom is just trimmings, really. Uh, we've got threshold, video frame per, uh, frames per second, TPU, FPS, and so on. Um, yeah. If we scroll right down to the bottom of the script, uh, there's a bit of timing going on to sort of um, do a little bit of benchmarking. Uh, and there's a section here, you know, if we press Q, it'll quit. Um, but if we press the up and down arrow keys, um, we can increase or de decrease the threshold or object detection threshold. Um, which is useful for, for, for tweaking things. Um, but that's it, the video script is exactly the same. Um, the only difference is, is instead of reading in our Pi cam, we're reading in video. And again, if you keep videos small, um, because our network input is small, uh, then you can expect to get some really, really good frame rates um, out of this. Um, as I said earlier on, um, I'd built the beer bottle following robot and it's, it's, it's kind of slow. Obviously, I'm going to be updating that over the coming weeks. The Raspberry Pi 4 will get mounted on it and the Google Coral will get mounted on it. Um, and we'll do some inferencing with the robot. 
um, and see where we get with that. As I said, I'm, I'm really, really um, expecting that this is going to be fast enough to be able to chase a dog around the living room. Um, since the robot was on YouTube last time, it's had some updates of its own. Uh, it's now got LiDAR on the top, um, so it'll be aware of its surroundings as well and won't be bumping into things while it's chasing the dogs around the place. So we'll see how that goes. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you all next time.